Hey everyone, I just wanted to share how amazing it is to use a dual motion capture setup specifically with Rococo Smart Suit 2 and the Smart Gloves. From an Unreal Engine instructor's perspective, this combo really takes character animation to the next level and makes the whole teaching process much more engaging for me as an instructor. So why does dual motion capture, why does it rock? It's enhanced realism. Capturing both body and finger movements adds a whole new layer to authenticity to your characters. It makes everything feel so much more, I would say, lifelike. So a real-time integration works by setting a Smart Soup Pro 2 up and the Smart Gloves. This is a pretty straightforward process. It's a huge plus because you can focus on teaching and developing as a instructor or a creator in, in this sense, or a studio. The gear is compact and portable so you can capture performances without being adhered to, to any studio. And integrating this into virtual production and live performances seamlessly enhances the virtual production workflow. From a game development standpoint, for developers, it does speed up the animation process and helps create more immersive gaming experience. Getting started is easier than you might think. So you just put on the Smart Suit Pro, you connect your coil, and you connect the Rococo Studio. So this is me. I'm streaming here from you for you to live. And I'm also recording this on the Rococo system for you to explore and see later in motion capture while we integrate these animations later down the pipeline. So let's go right through this and roll the show. This was Tato Studio. They blend together gaming, virtual experiences to create an entirely new form of immersive storytelling. I'm an instructor, Bartosz Barlowski. I teach virtual production, I teach gaming, I teach game design. I also come from the fellowship, which was built by Unreal Engine. And this fellowship was an amazing experience where I learned all, all the amazing pipelines, real time way to, to coordinate and work with virtual production, right? And that's really cool because it's an essential way to work with this and play with animations and, and create new experiences. So let's explore this techniques of using dual motion capture, what we can do with this. We've shown you a little demo of what's possible. This was a one-off project that we just created on a weekend and was really cool to just see how it can explore what is po what's possible, what's the pros and the cons. So the problem, the solution, the problem with recording high quality motion capture with two actors in one recording session is that it's expensive and that it's a time consuming process. That's why we have found that the Rococo system here provides the best value for an affordable price point compared to other mocap systems. So let's talk about motion capture, right? Because I've spent a fair amount of time generally working with students and studios interested in the projects. So motion capture or mocap is the process of recording the actor's movement and using that data to animate digital characters in real time. These days, it's not just for Hollywood blockbusters or AAA games. With these tools uh, like the Rococo Smart Suit and the Coil, it's become accessible for a whole range of creators and small studios. Picture something that looks like a sleek black wetsuit prepped with tiny sensors. This is exactly what this is. I would say this is the world's coolest pajamas. You put it on and every move you make, every step you jump, or dramatic sword you pull out is captured, it's, it's translated into, into data that we can use to drive digital characters in, in game engines, right? This tutorial is, is a step-by-step -step guide and you'll be able to see how this works through the back end of this, of setting up a two dual capture suit to calibrate everything and set it up.
So connect the first, the suit, the gloves, update the firmware. All the settings should be the same for both the SmartSuit Pro, except the device IP at the end. And this is the hardware's IP, and that should be also unique. Nothing else on the network should uh, have the same IP, right? So when the suits come in, they come in, and you can attach them to each of the um, c incoming data, right? Essentially, this is the process when you set it up and, and you start connecting uh, different parts of the suit. I like to use a step-by-step -step process, as you can see. So I connect the hands, and then the whole suit comes to life. We haven't calibrated them here, as you can see. Right here, we're exporting these animations into FBX. So FBX is the heart of where these body motions come into characters, into Unreal Engine. So all of this can be put into a new character. So the hardware, you need a Rococo Smart Suit 2 Pro. You need Rococo Smart Gloves. You need a Coil Pro. The thing about the Coil is that it's a one-to-one -one ratio of where you're recording and wh where you're looking at. So I'm looking at the camera here. So that way, my motion is always translated one-to-one, -one, whatever, to my physical wor world. So whatever I capture, capture an object, as you can see, it's translated here. Very powerful solution. With the head rig, you can put this all together into one compelling package of a real-time performance solution that can stream this in real time, do character performances, and so on. So the software we use are Rococo Studio, Unreal Engine, primarily UEFN, Cascadeur, iClone, and LiveLink Face App for calibration and face performances. All of this works together into cleanup and also enabling us as artists to produce more compelling work while using these tools to create animations, retargeting systems, create a new character performance, tell a new story, implement a new game system, capture new game animations for a character doing a performance like creating a powerball or something like that, or telling a new, entirely new story with this medium. So recording the mocap is mainly used for automated clean setups, remote, removing artifacts and jitter that come from a real-time performance, adjusting timing and pacing, and also retargeting. So fast setup, right? Mobility, price versus quality, the ease of use, built in smart uh, cleanup filters, compatibility with UE and UEFN out of the box, dealing with occlusion, I can do anything, I can occlude everything from a camera or an optical system. It doesn't care because this is inertia based and also precision fingers, right? Which are a whole new dimension to bringing new characters to life and creating like really cool things, right? My fingers, my fingers, one, two, three, four. Very precise. Once the system is rolling, my, my fingers are one to one without any glitches. I can do performances, I can play guitar, I can grab cups. Cups work really well. Any containers work really well. And it doesn't glitch out. Even catching a phone, you can do this, right? Do all these amazing animations that capture all that. This can go up to 200 FPS uh, if, you're, if you're using the system to record like really fast body motions, running or getting up from a chair really fast and stuff. Usually 100 FPS is good enough but I like to record with high fidelity. What are the cons? There's a range, right? If I walk out, I would just disappear. And the range of the coil is about five meters, but you can add more coils to, the, to your studio. And that way you can get more precise points of like tracking where the finger tracking will be working really, really well. Elevation tracking range sitting on a table was a problem. There has been solutions where if I lift up my legs, uh, as you can see, I get my character swimming in real time a little bit. It's not a, that big of a deal when it's in post, but in real time, it may be a problem for some people. Uh, interferences from metal objects like lithium ion batteries. I've just holded a giant uh, electric guitar. I'm going to do one more test for you. How interferences work so i'm holding it right now and you can see there is some l micro jitters that happen it's working pretty well like i i can't complain i could record a whole session so tips and tricks right so uh i always do a quick 15 second walk cycle to test the smart suit and finger gestures i look for clean motion in the rococo studio and try to fix any, you know, drifting joints before streaming to Unreal. 
Um, the cleanup mo mo of mockup data in Rococo Studio, I, I use the uh, Rococo tools to clean up the jitter, unwanted movements before sending the data to Unreal. This reduces, by the way, the need for extra post-processing later. As an example, uh, after capturing a jumping sequence, I use the footlock feature uh, in Rococo Studio. Uh, so I lock my feet, uh, it snaps the feet to the ground, fixing any unnatural floating or, or slipping, basically. Use with real-time preview with MetaHumans. Streaming data directly to the MetaHuman rig in Unreal Engine lets you preview the results in real time and adjust as needed. So when showing finger animations with smart gloves, I map them live to a MetaHuman in Unreal. This allows me to test how small gestures like thumbs or a thumbs up translate to a game-ready character, right? Also, use layered animations in Unreal. Combine mocap animations with uh, the control rig and also add minor tweaks without re-encoding. During um, a live Unreal Engine demo, I, r I reduced the lighting complexity and, and turned on lots, lot settings in the MetaHuman. This keeps my uh, you know frame rate while streaming from Rococo in a stable rate. So when working, on uh, like a sprinting animation. We record uh, ourselves performing the sprint and this helps to fine tune everything later uh, in posture, in post, in Unreal Engine and to the, the tools we've uh, mentioned before. And uh, are these are a couple of use cases you can see here. Boop. All that, all those use cases. So duo sports, uh, love scenes, hugging, musicians performing as, uh, as I've showcased, working with props like grabbing a lightsaber. <laughs> also, uh, murder scenes. <coughs> Those scenes also, you know, encapsulate horror scenes. And live show Collins, right? As you could see, I could be somebody who would be receiving Collins, talking to the li uh, live audience, and stuff could happen uh, on streaming and Twitch. Also, that captures the Im imagination, right? You can do a lot of things with virtual characters that you cannot do with real people. So that's also uh, something that you can take into consideration that it's opening up your audience, t audience also to new pieces of content that you wouldn't be able to produce otherwise. So to sum up, I'm here uh, at the intersection of creativity the storytellers, the tinkerers, the dreamers. It's for people who want to see their characters come to life. Their environments breathe and their stories unfold in ways that captivate audiences, immerse players and, you know, ignite uh, imaginations. So thank you so much. Uh, I hope you like this show and see you in the next episode. Bye bye. <laughs>